Hello there, and welcome back to more Final Fantasy VI. Last time, we traveled from Nakea to South Figaro, tracking down an individual who seems very closely similar to Edgar, who is in charge of a group of bandits. After following them, they have led us here, to a now sunken Castle Figaro. Today, we, are, we intend to follow this man further into Castle Figaro, not only to see what he is up to, but to also see if we can try and convince him to come back to his senses as the loving king that we know him to be. We're kind of on a timer here, though, as the denizens of Figaro have been underneath the ground for a whole year, and we don't know how long they have left to live, so we need to be hustling here. Uh, so, there's not really much we can do other than go down here where the engine room was, which still has a old man who's barely still hanging on and we can go down to the basement of castle figaro which normally we were in it we were unable to access this thanks to the old man uh but we now can grab it and unfortunately because castle figaro has been underneath the ground for a whole year that also means that there has been monsters that have infested this area so we do need to be careful there is thankfully a lot of new items for us here we also run into some enemies that we can fight also in the Figaro Caves. So let's go ahead and try to throw some uh, blitzes and attacks at Dante here. I do not want to fail my blitz. There we go. Just cast some strong magic, see what happens. There is one unique enemy that I want to focus on when we get around to it, but hopefully I can find it somewhat easily. Got X Potion and High Ether. We have a few options here now. Let's take this left entrance. It takes us upstairs. This is a secondary location. Not a big fan of secondary locations. Uh, okay, so let's actually back down. Go back down. Humpty, Crueler, and Neck Hunter. Okay, so this is the group of enemies we fought last episode. Oh, Celeste is confused now. That's not good. She has access to a lot of very danger dangerous abilities. Maybe Sabin can just take these guys down in one go and not have to worry about the Confuse? Okay, the Neck Hunter. She's going for Runic, which is a very interesting choice there, Celeste. Uh, thankfully, I think Sabin is going to be able to very comfortably take this Neck Hunter down. There we go. Cool. We don't need to worry about the Confuse. There we go. We get the Magic Plus 2, Magic Plus 1 on Sabin. I could work, begin work toward, uh, begin work towards seeing, uh, working towards more espers. Let's go ahead and do that. We do have Fenrir here. There's not really anything useful for, for me to learn on them. So I guess I could probably give Celeste, I don't know, Unicorn, and then we can give Sabin access to Golem? Maybe Carbuncle, so we can get haste? Yeah, we'll do that. Why not? Okay, let's take this more uh, rightmost path. This leads us up to another group of stairs. That leads us up here. Okay. Oops, did not mean to go back down. Okay, I'm just really dumb. For some reason, I thought we entered from the center area. No, we entered from the right, so I don't know why I was trying to double back there. Anyways, I'm going to go with my original plan and just go to a new area. We get a new treasure chest here with a royal crown, which uh, is an item I don't think we've actually seen yet. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. If we can. Aha, royal crown, there it is. It is a crown that can only be worn by those of royal blood. Well, we know who that is. Defense plus 28, defense plus, uh, magic defense plus 23, strength plus one, agility plus one, stamina, and magic plus one. That's pretty good. Um, the major difference between the Green Beret is that we will lose that HP increase, but we will gain an extra slot in magic, and that's a pretty decent bump for Sabin. So I think I actually am going to take that offer. Thank you. Uh, but I think that's actually everything I can grab in terms of that room. Unfortunately, Mad Sickle is going to confuse both of my allies. Great. Okay, Celeste is now back on the offense. Okay, Rasp. Okay, I don't think I've actually gone over Rasp. Rasp is very interesting. It will use... It is a magic spell that will 
remove MP. It will basically attack an enemy's MP bar. It will not drain their MP and give it to you. It will just sort of lower it. Um, so it's uh, versus like Osmos, which will drain... Uh, sorry, not Osmos. Uh, a Spear, which will drain an enemy's MP and give it to the user. Uh, Rasp it just kind of just does the first step of that. Which, um, the main turnaround use for that is Rasp will remove more MP than, uh, than utilizing... Sorry, I've got that backwards. It is actually Osmos that absorbs enemy from an, uh, MP from an enemy, uh, and Rasp just removes MP. So the main reason to use Rasp is that it will actually it will, uh, lower more MP than Osmos will drain. So if you just want to make it to where enemies cannot use magic, you will use uh, Rasp as it will just make it quicker, it'll be quicker for them to lose MP if you use Rasp. If you use Osmos, you'll be able to, to regain your MP after draining theirs, which will allow you to sort of be a self-sustained MP user without needing to worry about ethers or items or just in general. There we go. Uh, but it's not really something that I use. Osmos it was definitely a little bit more important, but I'm not really going to worry about that. Now... One thing I actually am going to do is I'm going to turn off encounters. And I'm going to do something that I would highly recommend for anyone who is playing specifically on the Pixel Remaster version of this game. Now, I don't want to go into this too much, uh, but I think this is actually a pretty decent time to explain it. So, there are two ways you can battle in this game. Active and wait. Active is where the enemy's ATB bar, they will continue to do actions as you are attempting to do your own actions, regardless of how fast or slow you are. Wait is whenever you are in a menu trying to determine what actions you want to do, like selecting items or magic spells, the enemy's ATB bar will fill, but they will not do their actual action until you are ready to go. Time stops when selecting items or magic spells, to be exact. And... Certain uh, abilities like poison or regen, abilities that have overtime effects, like those abilities, are affected by whether or not you're on active and your battle speed. Your battle speed really determines how fast all of these effects happen. So if you are playing on the very fast battle speed, things like poison and regen are going to tick often because of how the battle speed works and they will tick during menu navigation. If you're on wait, then they won't do that. And that's very, very important. So right now, I am actually for this one fight and one fight only, I am going to swap my game mode over to wait as I do not think I can feasibly menu the game fast enough to beat whatever we're about to fight if I have it in active while fast combat. So I am going to do this and I would highly recommend anyone who is on the Pixel Remastered version to do this. It is specific to the Pixel Remastered version. Do this. I highly, 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 highly recommend it. Anyway, let's go inside. So, this is the problem. Got its tentacles all tangled up in the engine. Boss, what should we do? Our treasure's in the storeroom back there. I'll keep this thing busy. You guys go get the treasure. But, boss, that's awfully dangerous. Just get moving. Edgar. <laughs> what are you standing around for, Celeste? Give me a hand. Edgar, it is you. Oh, yes, it is. And we're up against four tentacles. All of them have their own unique ability. Bottom right is weak to ice. Top right, it has no weakness, but will absorb lightning. Uh, the bottom left is weak to fire, and the top left has no weakness, but absorbs earth. And also, there is one that absorbs physical attacks. So we're kind of dealing with a bunch of just random tentacle enemies, and they all have their own unique gimmick. For one, they can all grab you, which they will then grab you and suck the life out of you while draining your HP and giving it to them. So the main idea here is to do, is to identify the weaknesses of each of them and just take them out one at a time by dealing powerful magic damage to them. 
Okay, we, we got Celeste grabbed, so we're gonna try and attack the, this tentacle that has her in its clutches. Now, the big problem that I was talking about is that if you're in a problem like this, I can't, I can't properly menu, I cannot properly menu if I'm in a situation like this. Now, eventually they will release you, so you need to very quickly try to take them down as soon as possible to get them, get the, your characters out of their clutches. Uh, okay, all right, we've got one of them down. We're going to need to very quickly heal up as Edgar took a lot of extra damage. Uh, unfortunately, he's kind of on his own, so we're going to need to have him heal himself or use an item. Uh, let's go ahead and see here. Bottom left is weak to fire, so we're going to go ahead and deal with that. There's Bio, which is very dangerous. Let's go ahead and actually heal him then. Oh no, it casts fire on him! No! <laughs> okay, 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 it's fine, it's fine. Sorry, Edgar. Uh, I didn't mean to... I didn't mean to do that. Okay, let's Phoenix down here. Uh, let's... Okay, Edgar's not in a good position. Okay, Celeste got grabbed. Saban got grabbed. Edgar got bio. No! Okay, this is not looking good. Uh, they kind of just get free HP. Thankfully, the bottom left one didn't grab either of our characters. So we're in a decent spot. Let's go ahead and use Kira. We need to get everyone back up as soon as possible. Let's not worry about Edgar, though. Let's try to use Rising Phoenix to, to get that damage on the bottom left guy. Let's use Celeste's turn to top off uh, uh, Sabin here. We're gonna see if we can at least try to get this tentacle out of the way. There's Entangle, which is not great. That slows down our party. This fight is brutal. I'm going to be frank. This is definitely a big beginner's trap. Well, I guess mid-game player's trap. And this is a very dangerous fight if you aren't if you aren't uh, prepared for it. Unfortunately, we're going to have to go back on the defense here. Heal up, as we are not in a great spot. I'll be, I'll be real here. Uh, this, in my opinion, is actually one of the hardest fights in the entire game. Like, unironically. There's just so much that can go wrong. And unfortunately, we're seeing a lot of that issue. Okay, uh, Celeste got stunned, which isn't great. And she also got grabbed. Okay, Rising Phoenix, though, is going to help here in taking down this bottom left tentacle. I just want I want as many of them gone as possible. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like this thing really wants to die, which sucks. Let's Rising Phoenix again. Uh, come on, come on, take it down, take it down. All right, two of them down in one go, but it costs Celeste's life. We need to get her up as soon as possible. Uh, Phoenix down her. Let's hope the tentacle doesn't attack Celeste. I'm oh, I'm even okay if it's an entangle. Okay, we got the evasions. Okay, we need... Let's have Sabin bring up Edgar. Very quickly have Celeste cast Cura on the right side here. Please don't have eyes on Edgar. Okay, okay. We can use the time in the menu to just kind of collect ourselves. Alright, I'm gonna have Sabin heal Edgar. I'm going to have Edgar then use tools to then attack the tentacle. This is the top right one, which has no weakness but will absorb lightning. We're going to have Celeste play on the on the defense here, and Asuna, Edgar's poison. Not Edgar's poison, uh, Sabin's poison. And then we can have Sabin begin to perform aura cannon, and Edgar to begin performing drill in order to do most of our damage here. Oh, gosh. I cannot tell you how much I was dreading this fight. Every single playthrough I have of this game, unless I'm like super duper overpowered, this fight always just somehow goes super wrong. And honestly, this was one of my more clean attempts at it. Oh, I'm so glad this one's done. Acting like you didn't know me. I'd heard Figaro had run into some kind of trouble. I wanted to get help, but how was I supposed to get here with the castle stuck beneath the sand? Then I caught wind of the rumor that those guys had escaped the dungeon. So you used them. Bingo. And obviously, I couldn't let them find out I was the King of Figaro. Because they just escaped from your own jail. You could have told us. Sabin, how'd you not recognize your own brother? Uh-oh, we better hide. Boss? Boss? That monster, m m monster must have gotten him. Poor boss. Didn't even last as long as the last boss. Oh well. Let's go. You don't care if they take that treasure? 
I couldn't care less. I couldn't care less about treasure. What we need to worry about is Kefka. Those guys haven't done anything wrong. Not really. So you'll come along. <laughs> Let's go shake things up again. You're right, Sabin. Edgar's back in our party. Let's go ahead and gear him up a little bit. Now, he comes with some interesting gear for that fight against the tentacles. Uh, but we're not going to worry about that. Let's go ahead and give him the golden spear. Diamond shield's fine. Diamond vest, crystal helm. He's been kind of set up, hasn't he? Uh, we're going to go ahead and give him the hyper wrist. And I guess we can also give him the hero's ring. Just in case we want him to use stuff like flash. But let's go ahead and see what's inside this treasure room. Empty chests, so to speak. But it seems like they missed something. The Soul Saber. Let's see what that is. Soul Saber. A sword that drains MP and may cast a death upon striking an enemy. This is a pretty decent weapon. Uh, it's kind of similar to the Assassin's Dagger, where it just has the chance of just kind of instant killing an enemy if they are uh, affected by death. So if you want to run that, plus the extra evasion is always nice. Uh, it's not a bad weapon, but the Golden Spear is going to be what I run with Edgar. Now, the, there are still enemies down here in the basement if you want to fight them. But I have no real reason to do that. This wasn't a very long dungeon. But I think our main priority is getting this castle back up, off the, uh, back up from below the ground so people can actually breathe. We, we'd have no idea if they have any time. Oh, the engine's working again. Next stop, the surface. Well, at least he's up and uh, up and at them. And the mighty Figaro rises once again. Thank you, old man. Let's go out and breathe some nice, nice air. <sighs> well, I guess before we end off for today, we can go ahead and explore Figaro for a little bit. King Edgar, welcome home. Yep, it's good to be back. It is good to be back. Any new dialogue for me, sir? King Edgar, welcome home. Who'd have thought the air could ever be so precious? Yeah, you never you never know how valuable it is until it's gone for a whole year. I'm still impressed that these people were able to hold on. It just shows the true might and t tenacity of the Figaro, Figaro citizens. Yo, you want to talk to me? Still can't believe that the power of magic has returned. Oh yes, it has. Magicite can impart magical powers to humans. Amazing. Yep. Uh, I'm glad you've caught up, good sir. Go ahead and go in here. See what we can find. This is a now a free inn if we want. Let's go and rest up a bit. We've we've had a bit of a difficult journey here. It's nice to have the Figaro brother, brothers back together. No unique cutscene for having them together here. We already saw that previously. Oh, King Edgar. Several residents of our castle left to join the cult of Kefka. Maybe they returned if a loved one went and pleaded with them. So, I guess they went out the sandworm too, uh, tunnels too? I don't know how it could have left, but you know what? If, if they're deranged enough to go and join the cult of Kefka, I'm sure they could find some way to get out of here. Let's go and talk to her, the High Priestess. Edgar is simply unbelievable. First the nurse, then me. The man hits on anything that moves. Well, doesn't seem like her opinion of Edgar has really changed in a whole year. Let's go ahead and see what it has, what there's in store for us in the throne room, I guess. Also, finally, it's just taken two thirds of the game, but finally we've collected all of the loot here in Figaro. I don't think there was ever anything I really mentioned, but the, the loot table here in Figaro Castle is just taunting you until you can finally go into the basement of Figaro and grab the last of the loot. However, thanks to the time skip, there actually is some new loot for us here in the form of the Debilitator. Now, this is actually something you, you, that you can get in the World of Balance if you were lucky, lucky enough to steal it from an enemy back in the Magitek Research Facility. Unfortunately, I was not, so I'm going to buy, buy it here. The Debilitator assigns a random elemental weakness to an enemy. It can be used with a tool's command. This is an interesting ability, and it's also one of the more valuable tools if you intend to 
attack the Intanger with elemental attacks, as the Intanger normally doesn't really vibe very well with elemental attacks, but if you make him weak to certain elements, then you can use those. Also, make sure you have Edgar in the party if you're going to buy these things, because you get an insane discount. So I would say if you have any intention to buy any of these items, to get them from Figaro, as you'll have a huge, huge discount. Um, I think really the only main thing I'm going to worry about here is potentially ethers. Let's buy, like, I don't know, 14 of them, so you have 30. That's a nice round number. But unfortunately, there really isn't much for us to explore here else in Figaro, other than just the fact that it is now off, off the sand and, well, off from beneath the sand. And we can always go back to South Figaro much quicker now, as the mountain pass that would normally block our way is mostly gone. Uh, but there is one important thing that the Castle Figaro actually hasn't lost the ability to do. And even though I'm sure the denizens of this castle really don't want to go back down into the sand immediately after their horrible events, I'm the king and you're going to listen to me. Let's go to call again. Hopefully the desert, the, the tectonic plates with the desert over by Culligan haven't been shifted because I don't know how the ingenuity of this uh, castle works, but hopefully the coordinates still work. And it seems like, thankfully, they do. The desert definitely seems a little smaller, but maybe, maybe that's just me. Here we are, Culligan. And the reason why I'm here in Culligan is because... Next time on Final Fantasy VI, we are going to explore Culligan, as it is, realistically, based on process of elimination, our next main area to explore, and it gives us access to a lot of new little gray dots. So, next time on Final Fantasy VI, we're going to do exactly that, explore this northwesternmost continent. So, with that said, I'll see you soon.